All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Kerry Roberts, who is in New Jersey. How are you doing, Kerry? I am good. Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, and Kerry's from the Branding Connection, help, uh, and she helps entrepreneurs, authors, and coaches build their brand awareness through podcasting. And today we're going to talk about branding and community building. So here's the thing. Um, we'll talk about branding in a, in a moment, but community building, right? Mm -hmm. How many times have you heard people say, oh, you know, let's start a, let's start a podcast or let's start a, a, a chat area or whatever, and we'll build this great community and then it never happens, right? So I would say 99% of community building efforts probably fail. Why, why is that? Uh, I always say that building community is one person at a time and it's about caring first. Most mm -hmm. people are so worried about the numbers in a podcasting standpoint, it's the downloads or how many people are coming to their event or how many people like their social media page, but they're actual people. And so as you take the time to get to know someone one at a time, that starts to grow your audience, your community, and then little by little, they start referring and talking about you and your community starts to grow organically from there. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree totally with that. And I think because we live in this strange world, right, where people only focus on the successes that are maybe a tiny, tiny percent. She's like, you know, I, I, I'm a little older than you, but like, you know, my son will like scoff and go, oh, you know, well, a PewDiePie has 20 gazillion followers or, you know, views on his. And you're going, yeah, but how many other people tried to do that and ended up like with very few? So, but I think that's, I think our expectations are sometimes out of whack. Yes, I would agree. Um, you know, from a social media standpoint, you can purchase followers. So it mm -hmm. looks like, you know, this kind of facade sure. that you have this quote unquote community, but it's not true. I am always a quality person first. I would rather have 20 people that really love what I'm doing and want to be a part of it than 500 that I paid for or don't care. So it's really about the quality, you know, when you're looking for a client or a job opportunity, or even if you take this into dating, you're looking for mm -hmm. one person, you know, one opportunity, two opportunities. You're not looking for thousands. And so I think if we think a little bit more on the quality side, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. And the other part is, I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, especially because of the, the pandemic and that suddenly there's a lot of people jumping into podcasting who weren't here before. Um, obviously you've been doing it for a long time. I've been doing it for a fair, fair long time at this stage too. Uh, so how do you advise people? Cause again, it seems to me like there's a lot of people jumping into it, but they're not really giving a lot of thought to it. And they jump in and they do their podcast and they get like one view or something. And then they, instead of like saying, okay, you know, I got to build, build this up there. Like they, they do another couple and after a while they just abandon it again and move on to something else. But so how do you advise people before they jump in? Yeah. So like you said, I've been doing podcasting for six years. I have my mm -hmm. own and I've done three others as well for clients. And I think again, it goes back. It's the same thing I preach all the time. It's caring. It's really about the person that you're interviewing first. And I always say the audience is second. So mm -hmm. are you making sure that they feel comfortable? Have you checked the pronunciation of their name? Have you looked at their website? Have you read their book? Do you make them feel cared for? My favorite thing is when somebody says, wow, I felt so comfortable. Wow. You really did your research and your homework. What a difference being on your show versus others. That's huge. Again, you start doing that. You start getting referrals. Other people want to be on other people start sharing it. So I think it starts with the actual person you you are interviewing first. And then second, it's like anything else. It's like running a business. It's whether you're doing sales, marketing, it mm -hmm. takes time. It's consistency, it's effort over time. And it doesn't happen in just a few episodes unless you already have a very large following to begin with. Yeah, no, I, uh, I love that. That's such great advice. And just to everybody listening, I did check Carrie's pronunciation of her name before we started. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and no, and I agree with you because um, for me, it, it has to be about the, the way I always look at this podcast is it's a conversation between two friends who've never met each other. Like, that's what I try to do. And then, and then people get to kind of eavesdrop on it. It's kind of cool then. Um, but to your point though, if you are choosing guests and you're trying to only choose and say, okay, if I interview this person, then they'll probably get me this audience and then I can do that. If you're kind of approaching it from that point of view, it's probably not going to work that well because that's kind of going to become pretty transparent. 
Yeah, and I want to just couple off of that because one of the other things that I've seen uh, with with clients I've worked with or other people talking about it is they always say, well, I want to get the best of the best guest on this show. Um, you know, the top CEOs, I've had someone ask, you know, can we get, you know, um, the top people at Apple or Amazon? And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, if we could do that, <laughs> we would be charging <laughs> a lot more. So I think sure. it's, it's number one, it's, you know, let's lower the expectation, but let's also change the perspective. I will say in six years of doing podcasting, I've done over 700 interviews. It is the people who are not the top CEO or the top person, but the person who is doing a good job but doesn't maybe get the recognition they deserve that actually gets the most downloads and is sometimes the best interview because they're so appreciative and they wanna share. You interview the people that are always getting interviewed, they're not gonna do anything for your show because they don't have to. They're of value to you, you're not of value to them. Mm -hmm. So it's really thinking about, you know, let's kind of bring it down a notch and say, you know, not be so entitled to say, oh, I should only talk to the cream of the crop. There are amazing people around us every single day. And part of you being the host or the producer of a show is to do your due diligence and go and research and find those tremendous people and add them to your show where they have the most value. Yeah, I, I love that, Kerry. I'm going to have to underline that about 50 times because um, that has certainly been been my experience. I have I've done about 500 plus uh, over the last three or four years, and some of the people I've talked to, I mean, they've all all the people I've talked to have been have had something to say in different ways, but some of them have just been so surprising in the insights and and I think that's the and the things the extraordinary things they've done and yes you know maybe they're not household names but who cares and um, the fact is that that they're very interesting they've got great insights and i think a lot of it has to do with when you're interviewing somebody if you're interested and excited about what they're telling you then chances are somebody who watches your podcast or listens to your podcast is going to be as well and uh and i think that's a really good thing to underline you know, not to just go and say oh I just want some blue check mark off Twitter because that'll give me immediate like coverage. And it's a, yeah, I hate to tell you, the person with that huge following knows they have that huge following and they're not going to give it away for nothing. Exactly. And I think, you know, the other thing you were talking about um, is that, uh, you know, not only people are, are sharing the content, but I think the other thing is, is that there are, um, again, so many people doing great stuff. And sometimes people just need a chance. And I'm always mm -hmm. talking about how can I give somebody that opportunity? And, you know, I'm, I'm very big on diversity and inclusion from different backgrounds, genders, parts of the world and thought as much as possible on my shows. And when the Black Lives Matter, I always say, you know, it came about, but it's been around for a long time. I asked myself, you know, what can I do in this situation? And I was like, you know what? I could have more black voices on my show. I had them, but I could do an effort to reach out and find more of them. And I think that's something, again, we have to do. Whether you're looking at it from, again, diversity of thought or background or gender, whatever you want to have, how can you do your job to research and make an effort and give somebody a chance and that's going to create great content and you just never know who knows who or how you could help one another and i think that matters more to me than anything uh you know more than having millions of followers or, or downloads that's really uh, at the end of the day giving someone an opportunity getting them to be heard letting them know they matter that's what i really care about yeah and i mean i have seen a lot uh, especially when people start podcasting and whatever their whatever industry they're in or whatever their target audience is, then they all suddenly seem to have the same guests on. Right? It's the same five to 10 thought leaders in that segment or whatever, and everybody has them on. And that's not to diminish the, yes, they have great things to say, but the trouble is if they're saying it, if they're saying the same thing on 20, 30, 40 different podcasts, um, that's not, you know, where's your differentiation? And I think to your point, I like the idea of diversity and, and because we, we spread out all around the globe and talk to people all over the place and, and from, from very different uh, perspectives and backgrounds. And it's so rich. I mean, it's, it's such a rich experience. And it's a rich experience for me because I get to talk to these people. And uh, I mean, it's like, it's not, it's not really a job when you're doing that, when you're talking to interesting people from around the world. It's just like, it's fascinating. It's like you meet somebody you know, when you're on your travels and they just have an amazing story to tell and you're like, oh, that was cool. It is. And I, I say all the time, I have not traveled physically as much as I would like, but in some ways mm -hmm. I feel like I, I have traveled because I have interviewed 
so many different walks of mm. life. Um, and I, I, you know, from young to old, again, so much diversity in, in thought and people and really making sure they're included, but it challenges your own perspective on things, yeah, you know, whatever your, your show is about, yours is about sales. I'm sure there are times you've had somebody say something that was different than what you thought and makes you stop and think about things differently. And I think that's a huge part of educational content. You know, a lot of times we get kind of sucked in the vortex of being around the same people, the same concepts. And I always encourage people, you know, talk to people that are different than you, that are doing something different in a different industry than you, because that is actually what's gonna make you stand out by taking some of those tactics and skills versus the same things you keep hearing over and over again. Yeah, and I think that's such an important message today because you know, you know people are, are tend to exist within their own echo chambers and exist within their own biases, etc. You know, regardless of where you sit on the on the political spectrum or whatever, people tend to stick in their own areas. You you have to get out and just talk to people, and you're never going to learn uh, without talking to other people, and and just. You know, and that's the thing that always kind of drives me mad right now is like, you don't actually learn anything and you certainly don't change anybody's mind by shouting at them and telling them they're stupid. I've never yeah. seen that work yet. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're not. It's, I think, you know, the big thing about podcasting, I say too, when someone says they want to host a show, mm -hmm. I always say it's really about the guest. It's not about you. Yeah. And really remembering, you know, that your job is to listen and to guide that person um, and so it might be your show, but it's really about the guests and the listeners can tell when it starts to become about the host only. Now, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with doing solo episodes or that sort of thing, but really making mm -hmm. sure you're coming back to what is the guest trying to showcase here? How can I help facilitate that? Uh, and that makes a big difference overall. Yeah. So how do you help um, people with that? Because I, what I've seen recently is, you know, there are some people who come into it and they, as you said, like, um, rather than focus on the guests, they think, okay, I'm going to stand out. Maybe I'll be more provocative or maybe I'll be more zany or, or whatever it is. You know, I've seen all sorts. Uh, and it definitely takes away from the interview of the guests because there's not that many people who can pull that off authentically. Yeah, I mean, that's where it comes into brand. I think it's a, whether mm -hmm. I'm talking to someone creating a show or being on a show, it's about who you are authentically. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of definitions of brand. Some people think of it as just a logo or a sound. For me, it's a feeling. So, mm -hmm. you know, how do people feel around you? What do they say about you? And when you're really being yourself, um, I, the way I'm talking to you is how I am all the time. I'm a, a dancer, so I'm, I'm used to, in a sense, performing, but I, I just, I get really excited and all my hands are usually moving around when I get excited about things. That's how I am. Some people are very funny. Some people are much more serious. Some people are really data analytics based and pull that in. So I think it's really going into who are you as a person, not who you're trying to think other people think you should be, um, and let that resonate. I think what's interesting when I hear from listeners around the world and they email me, I come to find they're actually very much like me, even though they're in different parts of the world, they have had similar life experiences or similar ages or they're female. And I'm like, I didn't necessarily set out to do that, but we do tend to attract people that feel a connection with our brand. Again, a feeling of who we are. So whether it's you personally, your small business, or you're representing an organization, you really want to think about, okay, who is the right fit? What is the right fit for this? Is that really me being a genuine person? Yeah. And, and again, I love that because I do think it's so important to, to be yourself because otherwise, as I said, it's, it's pretty transparent. And the thing is actually, if you start being inauthentic in this environment, it kind of gets magnified, I think. Yeah. I mean, people can tell if you're not being real. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, you know, a lot of the things are recorded um, and you mm -hmm. can kind of edit things out. And to be honest, my editing is usually like, if I'm like, oh, I forgot the question or what right. did you say? Things like that. But I never edit out the actual content. Um, I've been doing live interviews now for the past six months since COVID started. And that was, you know, its own teaching tool. That's where some of my dance background came in. I had a guy, I tell all the time, he is a professional drummer for a band he mm -hmm. forgot that we were doing the interview and he said, can I do it in the car? And I said, okay, we're doing this live mm -hmm. interview. We go with him to 7-Eleven. We go with him. His dog is there. And, and the whole time, like sometimes I'm losing him and I'm hysterical because I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the weirdest interview I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, it's so him. And it's a teaching right. tool for me to just go with the flow. And for people that are into him and his band and the drummer, 
that's going to be great content, which is another thing I say too, like don't judge the content you put out. There's some episodes I resonate with more than others, but you never know what your listener is going to resonate. And so again, as long as it's coming from a good place, let them kind of decide if they think it's good content for themselves. Yeah, no, I like that idea too, about the fact that the audience and at the end of the day, they are the final arbiter of the of the content. But I like that what you said too about the, the drummer. That was good. Because I, I guess it's an interesting thing byproduct of of the pandemic as well because a lot more people are at home so you know i've had people who say listen you know my cat's just going to come in here and start annoying me so would you mind if i just had my cat on my lap you know panting it i'm like no it's fine i mean it's actually <laughs> you know i'm just sorry the cat can't talk too but uh, <laughs> yeah but, i think it's you know like what you're saying i think it adds another piece mm -hmm. um you know yeah of course that there's a lot of noise or things like that and it's trouble sure. hearing yeah. but i think there is something really unique when you are seeing someone's personality and what they're wearing or what they're mm -hmm. doing it's very much who they are which for example i'm wearing black i wear black all the time because it is so easy i don't know if i want to take the sure. steve jobs approach but i'm like you know what black goes with everything i don't have to think about it i have four black shirts i just use them <laughs> Yeah. And it's less I have to think about. But other people who like are very much about color and fashion, they're going to showcase their brand in that way. So it's yes. it does kind of give itself, you know, another level, which I really love seeing podcasting going into this kind of uh, video and, and image type of thing as well. Yeah, well, I mean, when we st when I started this one, I mean, I started video from the get go, like four years ago, I think, because um, you know, just people, you just never know how people are going to consume their information. Some people like to watch videos, some people just like the audio. So we do the audio podcast, we strip that out as well. And, uh, you know, sometimes people like to read blogs, you can never tell. And I think that's what the richness of this medium is that it doesn't have to be a one size fits all and you can do something, but you can also have it presented in multiple ways for different audiences. It's true. Like you said, I mean, I'm the same way. Uh, I do live video, video, written, audio. Um, I take snippets and put it on social. And that's where I always talk about where I help people kind of clarify who they are and then amplify their brand. Because a lot of people maybe do a podcast, but then they don't know what to do with it or mm -hmm. how do I get people to see it? Um, and like you said, people consume things in different places. Sometimes people only want a two minute snippet or answer. They don't want to listen to yeah. the whole podcast and some people do. So if you can kind of take one piece of content and turn it into a few different things while showcasing who you are and providing knowledge for your audience that's a win-win all the way yeah and, and i like the fact that uh i mean you can do all sorts obviously different formats different lengths and time but the fact is i like the fact that there is even long form long form podcasting has you know become so popular because i just think that sh that kind of runs against the popular idea that people don't want to consume deep content it's actually not true yeah, I agree. Um, obviously, when COVID hit, it was a little bit different because people were at home. As we know, most mm. people listen to podcasts while they're working out, while they're driving, sure. while they're commuting. So there was a little bit of where it kind of went down for a moment. Uh, but now we have people, I do some work in the voice tech space as well. We have people listening on Alexa and Google devices too. So mm. it is coming up. And I think at the end of the day, when you are talking about a topic somebody really wants to know about, they're going to listen to the whole thing, you know, and yeah. I always tell my guests, as long as you're coming across as passionate about the topic and something you're knowledgeable about, it's always going to be good content. So what would your advice be? So say there's somebody listening or watching this who goes, okay, I've never tried podcasting, but I'm, I'm going to give it a go. Uh, what would your advice be to them before they even like dive in the deep end, maybe spare them some of the missteps? I think it always starts with, it's similar to how a business starts. If you don't own a business, if you work for a company, what are you passionate about? And I mm -hmm. always talk about passion from a love hate. So generally it can be something you just love and can't get enough of, or it could be something you're really frustrated with. How can you create something from that? Um, it can be on anything. Of course, I am always a person that as long as it's not hurting someone, so we're not trying to put anyone down or alienate, that's mm -hmm. just my personal philosophy, yep. uh, but it can be on anything. I mean, people will, if you're really into Legos, like there are people that are into that too and you wanna talk about it and people building it, like that could be interesting content for that niche. So I don't think it needs to be about, oh, everyone else is doing it or let me copy what someone else is doing. What are you excited about or what are you frustrated about? And start with that. And I recommend, you know, starting with people that you know, like a couple, mm -hmm. two or three people, maybe in your family or your friends you can interview. 
do once a week and just see if you like it. You know, some people are sure. like, oh, it's a cool idea. Then they do it and they're like, I hate this. I don't like interviewing. <laughs> I don't like people. I don't like scheduling. So it may not be your medium. Maybe you're better at blogging. Maybe you're better at videos. And so I always talk about when new things come up, it doesn't mean you have to be a part of it. You have to find again, what works for you as a person, what feels genuine to you. Yeah, no, I, I love that because I think it's such a, it, that's such a great way of putting it because I definitely think you have to be, you have to be passionate about it. So you definitely should try it out because I don't think people realize how, how difficult it can be, how much effort you have to put into it. And sometimes it's like, I'm sure you have the same if you have a number of podcasts backed up on a, on a day or something, you have a number in a day. I mean, there's probably days when you're like, oh no, not another one. And I kind of, for me, like I'm, I'm, I'm big into martial arts and that, you know, there are some times when I go to, you know, before class, I'll be like, oh, I'm too tired, I don't want to go. And then I go and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I went. But I always find that with podcasting, even when I'm done like three in a day and then I suddenly realize there's another one coming up and I'm like, oh, I'm not in the mood or whatever. I get into it and I love it and it just energizes me. Well, and I think that goes back to too, knowing yourself, right? Mm. Like I, um, I get really energized by meeting new people all the time. Mm. I did an event uh, for a client. I did 20 interviews in three days and people were like, how are you still standing? Aren't you exhausted? And I was like, no, this is awesome. Like, this is like yeah. my area, right? What mm. did I get exhausted about? Editing. I could do it, but I really hated it. And now I have mm. a wonderful audio engineer who has helped me. He's a hundred times better than I am. It's quicker. And so it made sense to pay for that. So I think it's mm -hmm. also, again, being aware of what do you like about the piece? You know, maybe you actually realize you like the editing more. Maybe you like yeah. the finding guests. Maybe you like the interviewing. Maybe you like the sound design. There's a lot of pieces to oh. doing a podcast. And when you're doing it yourself, you do it all at first. Um, and you may find like, okay, there's certain parts that are more exhausting and certain parts that are more exciting. And so it's just kind of navigating what works for you as a person and your lifestyle. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice because I mean, maybe then you end up you partnering with somebody because if you say, yeah, you actually end up liking the editing better than the actual podcasting or whatever, then maybe you partner up with somebody who's more at the, uh, the talent end of it. Yes, exactly. And I do for, you know, my show is a little bit different. When you do your own show, mm -hmm. you have a lot more creative license sure. for clients that I have. I do a lot in the tech space. And so I spend a lot of time researching on stuff I don't know. And so you start to kind of learn so much about people mm -hmm. and topics so that you become knowledgeable within a space. So um, it's just interesting. You know, there's a lot of different avenues and a lot of different genres that it can cover. Yeah. Listen, Kerry, this has been fantastic. I mean, it's such great advice for people. I would encourage them to check out the brandingconnection.com if you're thinking of podcasting. All of Kerry's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah. So like I was saying earlier, I help entrepreneurs and businesses find what they're great at and amplify that. And I do that a lot through content marketing in the form of podcasting, social media, and a little bit of voice technology as well. I love connecting people and uh, just helping them find what they're great at and shine. So we'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn, or like you said, the brandingconnection.com. And thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, and thank you for, for coming on. As you can see, uh, Kerry's a pro at this, so uh, I would uh, encourage you to check it out. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.